Al-Hay, the ever-living. If you want your kids to be Muslim after you, do this. Al-Hay is mentioned in the Quran five times, including the greatest verse in the Quran, Ayatul Kursi, the verse of the throne. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu la ilaha illa hu al-hayyul qayyum. Allah, there's no deity worthy of worship except for him, the ever-living, the sustainer. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم Drowsiness does not overtake him nor sleep And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever living And hayat is the opposite of death So not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's life not end But it is not diminished by sleep or drowsiness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to call upon him Because he's the ever living He says هو الحي لا إله إلا هو فادعوه مخلصين له الدين Allah says he's the ever living There is no deity except for him So call upon him Sincere to him in the religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us to rely upon him because he's the ever living. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, and rely upon the ever living who does not die and exult with his praise and sufficient is he with the sins of his servants acquainted. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to rely upon him. Why? Because he doesn't die. We all have people that we rely on. They are our world. It could be our parents or spouses or, or siblings or close friends. But this verse is a reminder to us that we should rely not upon them and rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they will die and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who doesn't die. The hadith that's reported by Tabarani, Jibreel comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, Ya Muhammad, live as long as you wish for you will die. And do whatever you wish for you will be recompensed for it and love who you wish, for you will be separated from them. And know that the honor of the believer is in their prayer in the night, and that their dignity is in their independence from people. The Prophet وسلم, is being told, love whoever you wish, they're going to die. You're going to be separated from them. And Rasulullah himself had two pillars of support in Mecca. He had his uncle Abu Talib, who was his external protection, and he had his wife Khadija, who was his internal tranquility. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused both of them to pass away within months of each other in what would become known as the year of sadness, the year of sorrow. And so what's the lesson? The lesson is don't depend on them, but depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does not die. And for the companions, their pillar of support was Rasulullah himself. And so when he passed away, it seemed like their world was swept out from underneath them. They could not process the idea that the Prophet ﷺ had died. Umar ibn Khattab عنه, his response was denial, standing in the masjid and threatening those who would say that Rasulullah ﷺ had died. He, rather, he, he didn't die. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet ﷺ had simply went to go visit his Lord like Musa ﷺ had went to visit his Lord and that he would come back. It wasn't until Abu Bakr عنه, came and gathered the people in the masjid and he made his famous statement. He says, whoever of you has been worshiping Muhammad, فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَاتْ And whoever is worshiping Allah, Allah is ever living. إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يموت. Allah does not die. And then he recited the passage, Muhammad is nothing but a messenger. Many messengers have passed away before him. So if he is to die or to be killed, would you turn back on your heels? And those who turn back on their heels will never harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah will reward the grateful. And so the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they said it was as if we had heard this verse for the first time. This name teaches us to not attach our religious devotion to the presence of any individual, because the individual, no matter how great they are, they are going to die. And so to the parents who want their children to be Muslim after them, the method is very clear. Teach them to be concerned about the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not your presence. You will not always be around. But Al-Hay will be. Allah is Al-Hay, the ever-living. He does not die. A man once I met in the masjid, he told me in passing, he said, I tell my kids, do you want to know when y'all will be Muslim? And the kids are like, what do you mean, dad? We're already Muslim. And he says, no, y'all will be Muslim when you pray without me or your mom telling you to pray. And the message that he's trying to instill in his children is that they should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala independently on their own. They need to pray in submission to Allah, not in submission to their parents. Their parents will not always be there asking them or commanding them to pray. They will be separated. Eventually, they'll be separated by distance or they'll be separated by death. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be there. And He is Al-Hay. He's the ever-living. And so some final takeaways from this name. Al-Hay reminds us to not be so attached to this world that is fleeting. We were not meant to be permanent dwellers here nor was this life meant to be perfect. Instead, our existence here is 
marred by weakness, sleep, inability, illness, poverty, old age. And if we have managed to avoid all of these things for an extended period of time, it is experienced by those who are closest to us, our closest circles, our dearest ones. This life was not made to be perfect. And so the name of Allah, al Hay, the one who's ever living, who created life, tells us where real life is. He says, وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهُونَ وَلَعِبْ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانُ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ And this worldly life is nothing but diversion and amusement. And indeed, the home of the hereafter, that is the true life, if they only knew. You know, the hereafter, Allah calls it the true life. It's like when you're going to a restaurant with a person who is an absolute expert chef. And this expert chef, you choose the restaurant and you're excited about it. And then when you go and you eat, and the chef eats, and then you tell him, you say, what would you rate this? And he says to you, out of five stars? You're like, yes, out of five stars. He goes, one star. But tomorrow I will take you to a place that's not only five stars. I will take you to a place that's seven stars, if such a thing exists. The point here is that the rating of someone who knows is different than the rating of someone who doesn't know. And to Allah is the highest example. He is the one who created this world, and he created the hereafter, and he's telling us that this life is nothing significant at all. And the real life is the next one.